The average American consumes more than a pound of sugar a week. It sounds unbelievable until you consider that sugar goes by 50 different names and it's found in many processed foods from the morning donut you eat to the ketchup that you put on a sandwich or a hamburger. Today we're joined by Dr. Laurie Betts of the Pottstown Health and Wellness Foundation. And Laurie, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Let's Today we're going to be talking about blood sugar. So let's start off by trying to explain to people what is blood sugar. Okay, well blood sugar is a very basic part of your body's metabolism. Um, we really need sugar as fuel for our body. That is, of anything that we eat, everything is basically a fat, a protein, or a sugar. Okay. And sugar is the part of the engine that is the fuel. You can't run a, an engine without fuel, and that's why we need sugar. Right, right. So, so on one hand, we all know that too much sugar isn't good for us, but on the other hand, we need some sugar to function. Absolutely. So when we eat sugar, is it turned into blood sugar? Is that what happens? Well, all the food that we eat is broken down and converted into the things that we can use in our body. And the, anything that we eat that ends in OSE, anything oats, high fructose, corn syrup, sucrose. That's what we were saying, those, the 50 right, different names. Right, the 50 it says different all these names. names. Um, well, anything carbohydrate or sugar is going to be broken down, and the only type of sugar that our body can use is the form of sugar called glucose. Okay. So when we talk about blood sugar, what we're really measuring is the body's type of specific sugar that we use called glucose. Some people process glucose better than others? Absolutely, yeah. Um, part of it is that what form we take it in. Um, if you eat a lot of processed types of sugars, that will have a different effect going into the bloodstream than if you eat a, uh, a slower broken down starch or a more natural fructose type of fruit sugar. But all of it gets converted by our bodies into its usable form, which is glucose. And that's what we measure in the lab. Why should we be concerned about blood sugar? Why is it important to us and to our health? Um, well, blood sugar is completely importantly regulated by the body. We, our bodies make two hormones. I think everyone has heard of insulin. And that helps take blood sugar out of the bloodstream and deliver it to our cells so we can use it. There's another hormone called glucagon that helps bring sugar from storage back into the bloodstream. So there's a really narrow range of what's a good level of blood sugar for our bodies. If we have something wrong with our diet or with the hormones and all the systems in our body that, that keep it in balance, then we can end up with problems like diabetes, which is too high a sugar, or hypoglycemia, which is too low a sugar. Okay, How, so, so it's important to find out what your blood sugar level is. It's very important, and uh, one of the things with blood sugar that's important to know is the same as what they say about blood pressure. A lot of times you may not have symptoms, and if you don't have it checked in a lab, you might not know if there was something wrong, and it's very, very important to have a normal sugar as close to normal as possible. Should, how, how often should you have it checked? Is this something that when you go into your doctor every year you want to say I want to have my blood sugar checked or, or how do we know how to, how to get a handle on that? Well the recommendations are uh, should be specified to your particular needs so again let me highlight you know check with your own doctor but the guidelines would be to have it with your physical uh, starting at least at 45 years of age every year or two if, but if you have other particular risk factors, which lots of people do, then you need to have it checked younger and more often. The things that would make you need to have it checked younger and more often would include being of African American or Hispanic descent, having um, a relative in your immediate family, a parent, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, grandparent, that has diabetes or a sugar or insulin problem, having high blood pressure, having heart disease, having um, any history of heart disease and other risk factors that will put you at a much higher risk of having diabetes yourself. We know that, that high blood sugar can lead to diabetes eventually, is that correct? Yes, uh, a lot of it can get technical and there are exact numbers, but there is a range that's normal and then there's a range that's higher than normal but isn't quite diabetes yet and we now call that pre-diabetes. Then if you get to a blood sugar that's too high, then by definition you are diabetic and then that's when you not only start needing to worry about your sugar, 
but you need to worry about the consequences of diabetes, which can be extremely life-threatening, and untreated can really be deadly. I, I've read that there's millions of people walking around now who are pre-diabetic and don't even realize it. Absolutely. Uh, there, are, there is more than one kind of diabetes, and the, the reasons for diabetes are various too. There are there is a traditional genetic type that usually shows up in in childhood, and um, it's something that has to do with antibodies to your own body. Um, then there are also parts that a huge genetic link, and there are also things that have to do with lifestyle. So there's a great emerging amount of talk about a new a newly recognized type of diabetes that we're calling type two diabetes. Right. which has more to do with being overweight and a genetic link than the autoimmune form. So it's not just the amount of sugar that we eat, it's also it's all the other factors of our lifestyle combined. Absolutely. And you know, even if you have diabetes, there is a tremendous amount of importance on how to manage your diabetes. And you may not be able to get a perfect sugar, but we didn't used to think that it was that important to have a particular number in your in your blood sugar. But now we know that keeping your sugar managed, if you do have a problem, will vastly reduce the chances and the, the uh, significance of the problems you're going to have down the road. So how, how can the number you do is that? Important. How can you manage your sugar outside of, you know, I think a lot of people listening might say, well, I, I guess I shouldn't eat so much sugar for one thing. Right. But, but is, is there more to it than that or is it as simple as that? Well, there is. And I guess one really important thing to mention is that when we're talking about sugar, we're really talking about what the body's going to do with the sugar. So it isn't just a matter of I should eat fewer cookies. It's a matter of a whole lifestyle that involves eating the right kinds of food because, as I said in the beginning, we do need sugars for our body to operate at all. So you can't just say, well, I'll stop c cutting out sugar. I'll, I'll stop eating sugar and therefore I'll have no and more problems. And there are some good sugars, right? Right. Yeah. There's lots of good yeah. sugars. Fruit and, and Fruit things and like vegetables that. and whole grains. What we want to do is have the right balance in our diet and the right types of sugars in our diet in order to keep our sugars in the right uh, range. In addition, we've also learned that, you know, exercise, not smoking, right. keeping our blood sugar and our cholesterol levels down are also extremely important because of the problems that diabetes right. leads to with heart attacks and other right. medical problems. Okay, Laurie, thank you so much. It's an awful lot to think about, um, but we want to encourage people to talk to their doctor about blood sugar and, um, and to learn more about it. So thanks so much for, for being with us today. Thank you. Blood sugar is really just a measure of how much sugar is in your blood, and blood tests done in a lab can help you determine how well you're doing. You should talk to your doctor about blood sugar. It's important to keep tabs on it because it can lead to dangerous health issues like diabetes. Be sure to eat a well-balanced diet, and be sure to get lots of exercise, and don't forget to talk to your doctor.